Has it ever happened with you that there is some popular item and you go into a store to buy it? And what happens is the item is right in front of you as soon as you enter the store. So what do you think? Is that a coincidence that the item was just kept over there? Well, sometimes maybe yes, but most of the time that item has been strategically placed at the entrance of the store so that the store can serve you faster. And that is exactly what caching is. In this video, we are going to explore more about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Caching is another fundamental concept when it comes to system design. Always remember that your end goal is that you want to serve a lot of customers and you have to do that in the fastest possible way, right? So it is very natural that you can increase the speed of serving those customers if you can somehow already know what the customer is coming in for. Think like this, you have a bookstore and even before the customer walks in, you already know that, okay, maybe the customer wants this item. You can have that ready. This way, the customer that is coming in, they will be very, very happy, right? And that is exactly what we want to do when it comes to computer applications. So before learning more about caching, let us quickly do a quick recap about what all do we already know. Up till now, we have discussed why system design is essential and where would you find it in your career growth and where does it come in an interview process. We then understood what is scaling and why do you need to scale a system? What is horizontal scaling and what is vertical scaling? After that, we have started to learn some of the basic fundamentals that come in system design. We have a client server model. It has its own advantages and disadvantages. After that, we discussed about a load balancer so that we are serving a lot of clients with some distributed servers such that the load at each of the server is balanced. And then you can have a service which is kind of homogeneous. And we were doing all of this while relating this to an example of a bookstore. This way, you are able to see this example in real life and it becomes very, very easy to connect all the dots and it sticks in your mind. So even with caching, once again, we are going to take the same example. I have a large bookstore and I have some customers coming in. If you think about a typical bookstore, what does a bookstore look like? Let us do a fun exercise. We will look at some random examples of bookstores. So I have this bookstore over here with me. This is the second bookstore. This is the third bookstore. And then now this is the fourth bookstore. So in all of these bookstores, what is one thing that you see in common? Just take a moment once again and go through all of these images again. What is one characteristic thing that you are seeing in all of these bookstores? If you notice closely, in any of the bookstores that you see, you would see a huge collection of books, right? But over here, what do you see in the front? Just focus on this particular collection. And in the exact same way, look at these other examples as well. What do you see over here? In every bookstore, just try to see. Whenever you go, there is a counter or a shelf where you have some of the popular books already available. And what is that doing? A customer walks in and because these books are popular, there is a very high chance that the customer came in for looking for these books, right? And this speeds up the process so much, correct? If this shelf wouldn't have been there, your customer will have to look at all of these other books, right? And then go find it. It could be a chance that the customer becomes unhappy and they just leave. It is also possible that they don't even find the book just because of shortage of time or your bookstore is so huge. So what are we doing? Basically, what we do is we keep one section of the bookstore as bestsellers. And this bestseller is caching. You have predetermined that, okay, these are some of the books that a customer can come in and they want it. So it saves your time, it saves the customer's time, and it increases the speed of the transaction as well. So this is exactly how caching works in a real life. So what about computer applications now? When it comes to computer applications, we use caching almost everywhere. And for system design, you represent caching using this particular symbol. So basically, it is kind of a memory or a small database which has a very high speed. So if you try to think, you have your hard drive and then you also have your RAM. RAM is kind of a cache memory. 
that is why you might have heard that okay if you increase your ram then the speed will go up why does that happen that is because you are loading up all of the content that you need frequently and if your ram size is huge then you are able to load a lot of content such that okay i can process the items quickly but this ram is expensive than the main memory correct that is why you cannot just replace your hard disk with your ram and your ram cannot also be so huge that you are just dumping all of the data on it so that is why you might have seen that okay if you increase your ram size your performance will improve up to a certain limit but you cannot say that okay i will install 4 terabytes of ram and then my computer will be very fast that does not happen because think about it if you look at your bookstore again and if you just increase your size of your best sellers let us say this rack is very huge then it defeats the entire purpose right so your cache memory is relatively very less when compared to the main memory and it has to be very fast also so what does typically happen up till now we had this server correct and whenever users were querying any data what used to happen you went to your database and then asked okay i want this the database returns some information and then you give it back to the clients correct this could be a news website and then all of the clients are requesting for specific articles let us say there is some breaking news so client 1 is asking for article 1 client 2 is asking for article 2 and then all the other clients also they are asking for article 1 because that is the breaking news in the current scenario what will the server do for each of these request this server is gonna make five requests to the database right and then get all the articles again and again this is where you introduce caching and now what happens this server will try to first look into the cache in the cache if it finds article 1 then it does not need to go and look into your database it can simply return this article from the cache and this user will be very happy then comes user 2 user 2 is requesting for article 2 the server will again look into the cache it cannot find the article in here so now you will go into your database and then get the result and then you will go on to the user again but what happens for these other users now once again they want to look at article 1 so this server will just query the cache and it can serve all these three clients very very fast we are reducing how many times we have to look up in this main memory and this is saving us a lot of time let us now understand some of the key terms that you must be aware about when you talk about caching so let us say our system is set up something like this i have my new server available over here and let us say that in my cache i have all these articles available and then obviously i have my main database that has all the articles over here i have a bunch of users that are requesting some of the articles so user 1 is asking for article 1 i will look in my cache and hey i found it so i will simply return it if you are able to find anything in your cache this is called as a cache hit so once again the second user asks for article 9 you are able to find it so you simply return it this is also a cache hit the third user asks for article 1 it is available so once again a cache hit the next user is asking for article 10 you look in your cache you cannot find the article 10 anywhere so now what do you do you will go and you will try to look in your main memory this concept is known as cache miss because you looked in your cache and you didn't find it over here so once again for this next user it is requesting article 5 a cache hit this user is requesting article 12 a cache miss and this user is requesting article 7 so once again a cache hit so you can say that a system is supposed to be good if it has a good cache hit to cache miss ratio that means you are able to look up a lot of your requests in the cache and that is good right now there should be a burning question in your mind how are you determining what articles do you want to keep in the cache it could be possible that you have to change this right think about it if suddenly there is some breaking news and then all these users they want to know about the breaking news so what will happen now all of them they will try to look in the cache they won't find it and you will try to find it in your database your cache miss count is increasing so your ratio is decreasing so this is not good what you need to do is 
you will now have to add a new element to your cache. But if you remember, our cache has very small memory and it is very limited. That means you will have to remove any one element from this cache. And it could be any element. Let us say I remove this article 5. So this will be gone and this new element will be inserted in my cache. But how do you decide which article do you have to remove? You have to remove this article in such a way such that your cache hit is to cache miss ratio. This remains good. Only then your system will be fast. So there are a multiple strategies by which you can determine which element do you have to actually evict from your cache. So first of all, let us say I have my scenario something like this. I have all of these articles in my cache and then there is this new article that is coming up. So it is decided that, okay, you have to get rid of any one of these articles, correct? So the first strategy is random eviction. It is literally random. What you will do is you will just do any, mini miny more and okay, I will get rid of article 16. You remove it and then you will put this new element in your cache. So this is random eviction. And actually, sometimes it could just work because you could have a website which has a lot of random articles and it is not necessary that one of the article has a very high viewership. It is not necessary that article 16 was being viewed by a lot of people. In that scenarios, random eviction is very helpful when you have a homogeneous view of all of these articles. The next technique is first in first out and it is very similar how you have your queue. So what I have over here is, let us say this is my initial cache. What might have happened is someone opened article 4, then 16, then 23, then 15 and then a 8. So these got added in my cache one after the other. Now what happens when a next member comes in? So which element do you remove? You remove the element that was added in the first place. That is first in first out. This element was the first to come in. So this element is the first to go out. Now, if you have to add another member to your cache, what will you again do? So this is going to go away and then this new member will get added to your cache. So this is literally just a queue and you will keep on adding elements to your cache one by one and keep on removing the old ones. Now, this method seems more natural, right? Because the elements that got added to your cache previously, they are now old, correct? And you want space for new articles. But it could also be possible that the article is old, but it is still very popular. In that scenario, we use the least frequently used technique. And as the name suggests, we will try to evict the element from the cache that has the least hit count. So let us say I have all of these elements in my cache and I'm also storing how many times I have actually done a cache hit on these elements. So you are keeping a count that, okay, how many times I have hit this article. So think about it. If it was a FIFO method, this article would have gone away, right? But if you notice, article 4 has had 53 hit counts. But look at article 16. This article was only accessed 15 times, correct? So it makes sense that if you have to remove an element from your cache, what will you do? You will get rid of this particular element. And what you will do is you will take this new element and this gets added to your cache now. Similarly, there is another method which keeps a track of least recently used. So this is keeping a track. Okay, when was this cache item accessed for the last time? So try to think like this. I have all of these elements in my cache and along with all of these elements, I am also storing when there was a cache hit on these elements. So what do you see over here? These two articles have been accessed today. This article was accessed yesterday. This article was accessed a few days ago and this article was accessed a few months ago. Correct. And now this new article has to come in. You have to evict one element. So what does the term least recently used suggest? This article is least recently used, correct? Because all of these articles have been pretty recent. So if you have to evict an element based upon this particular algorithm, this article 15 will go away. You can think like this. Article 15 was really popular some days ago, like some viral news. 
and now the trend just went away and you have new viral trends coming up in such a scenario what do you do think like instagram you only want to keep the latest trends correct so it makes sense that you get rid of the trend that was in the past so that is why it is very necessary that you decide the eviction technique based upon something that you're implementing it all comes down to your use case and that is why i cannot go over an exhaustive list that hey these are all the methods by which you can evict a entry from your cache and there is no best method as well and if you notice you can relate all of these examples with a bookstore also like which book do you remove from the shelf do you remove the book that is from the past do you just remove a book randomly do you remove the book that you placed first or do you remove the book based upon frequency of people buying it so this is a lot of food for thought and you have to talk about it when it comes to caching in system design but as you know with every system there are some things that you should always be careful about and caching is certainly one of them let us say my system currently looks something like this all of these users are requesting and my cache has some articles let us say both of these users want article 16 you are very happy to look into the cache and you return them the article but what happens if someone updates article 16 on your database then this article is no longer consistent with the cache it could be possible that this version is an older version and on the database you might have a newer version you might have seen that on web pages as well right until and unless you keep on refreshing every time you won't get the new content loaded this is where you have to be careful and you have to keep a track that okay if an article gets updated in your database you have to update your cache also so you have to implement all of these systems such that your cache remains updated all the time similar to this the other issue you would face with caching is coherence it means that let us say your server is deployed at multiple places in the world then each of these servers will have a different cache correct so you have to decide should all of your caches be exactly the same or should all of your caches be according to the users who are accessing them and this can become a challenge when you are actually implementing all of this in your application code so this is one more thing to be careful about and the last and the most important thing that you have to always talk about when it comes to system design is security just like all of these articles sometimes you might have to cache your login credentials also you might have seen this right that you would check on stay signed in and then whenever you open your account it just opens without asking you for a login why that is because caching was involved over there so you always have to be mindful how much time you have to keep these login credits in your cache you cannot just have them over there permanently that way there can be some malicious activity on your account so you always have to be mindful about all of these things you will need to remove these credentials as determined by your policy and it is a good idea to talk about it these are some of the things that you must always talk about when you consider using caching in system design and as i said before there is no particular method or a perfect method by which you can determine okay this is the elements i need to keep in my cache and this is a technique i will need to remove elements from my cache so it is always a good idea that you talk this through with your interviewer that way you will be able to come up with a better technique and it can be a custom algorithm also you can combine two techniques and come up with a better explanation all you need to do is your cash hit to miss ratio that should always be a good number so what kind of a cash eviction method can you come up with and also tell me if you have seen any other real life example like i just talk about the best seller section in a bookstore just tell me everything in the comment section below and it will become a very good discussion and i can talk to you guys as well if you like content like these please do consider subscribing to my channel and also share this video with your friends this really keeps me motivated and i can go on also a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel you guys are the real rock stars and as a member you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well so stay tuned for my upcoming video until then see ya